Hey, good morning guys, thanks for tuning in. We're up here on the lake today fishing some kokanee with some Brad's Kokanee Dodgers. And I tell you what, we're gonna take this opportunity to go through how to effectively fish this type of gear for kokanee and trout. And I can tell you that when I'm going through some of these local lakes and reservoirs fishing for these fish, I see a lot of errors where people are, they don't have the proper leader lengths or they're not attaching the weights or the snubbers to the right locations on the gear and it really has a drastic effect on your how effective you can catch these fish. So as always guys, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Also comment down below if you'd like to see any other trout or kokanee tutorials. And as always, if you guys could subscribe and share this video out to your friends and families and coworkers, we really greatly appreciate your support for the channel. Oh, I got one. Right here. Moment of truth. He's, oh, he's just giving it to it now. Oh, I got him. This is a good one, too. Oh, oh here we go. Ooh. Holy smokes. Got him. Oh, he came back. He's being in good. Yes. Wow. Oh, put a bow on it. Game over. Oh, my God. Oh. Mike's got one. That's a good one, dude. Go around him. Now, now take it around. Take it around. There you go. There's a, there's a kokanee on a Brad's kokanee cup plug if I ever seen one. All right guys, Mike just caught a fish, so we're gonna go over our Dodger setup here um, and what we're using to catch kokanee today, but it's also extremely effective for trout. So since I'm using downriggers today, I've got my main line that's just tied directly to the Dodger. I don't have anything in front of it. I'm no, I don't want anything to interfere with the movement on the Dodger. So one of the key attributes to the Dodger working really well is that it has a lot of swing and it puts a lot of movement on the lure. I don't want to put anything in front of this to deaden the action of this Dodger. What I do see a lot of people doing is they'll put a snubber in front of the Dodger or maybe directly behind the Dodger or they'll add their lead right here. And if you don't have enough room for this Dodger to swing, it's not gonna be putting the proper action on the lure and it's not gonna be enticing the fish to strike. Ultimately, I think what happens with Dodgers is that Dodger's swinging back and forth and they think that another fish, they think that this Dodger is another fish taking a shot at something and there's whatever that something is is right behind it. So I think you need to have that action. You need to have as much movement on this Dodger as you can and it needs to swing as freely as it can. Let me show you. Okay guys, so I'm going 1.2 miles an hour. One thing about Dodgers is that they have a certain range that they're effective at. And depending on the Dodger, that range can be greater or smaller. And why that's important is because if I have a Dodger that's only effective at a very small range, if I'm having to make a lot of maneuvers and I have to move around boats and I'm gonna, or I got wind kind of gusting or pushing me around, maybe I have a top on the boat, Keeping that speed consistently in that range is really important. One thing I like about the Brad's Kokanee Dodger, it has a wide range that it's effective. So it, I think that these Dodgers fish really well from 1.0 to about 1.5, 1.6 miles per hour, right? Like I said, if I'm moving around and the winds push me, the weather sucks, that Dodger is always going to be fishing versus another Dodgers or other Dodgers that have that short range, it's going to cause the Dodger to spin or it's gonna cause the Dodger to not have enough whip. And like I said, your, your effectiveness of when you're actually gonna get a fish to bite goes way down. All right guys, so with this Brad's Dodger, I'm going 1.2 miles an hour. And as you can see, there's a lot of whip, but the Dodger itself is not rolling over. Since it's not rolling over, it's putting a lot of action on that spinning glow and on that corn. And that little pulse and that little shake is what's gonna make those fish bite. Now, if I go too fast and I'm out of range for my Dodger, it's gonna start rolling over. And for whatever reason, that's not near as effective for catching kokanee as keeping that Dodger with the proper swing. Oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> it was tiny. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm like trying to like put out the gear so I can show you guys how to, and they're grabbing it on the surface. 
Boys and girls. Like right on the surface? Oh, dude, he was on the surface. Watch this. <laughs> That's a big kokanee to be doing that. But, you know. <laughs> I need to get back to talking about this tutorial for you guys. Bam! Whoa! That's a big kokanee. Really big one. Now I'm sure you guys noticed how long this leader is, and this happens to be about a 9, 10 inch leader, which is about the longest that I'd ever use for a spinning glow, a hoochie, or maybe even like a small spinner. Now, I want that short leader because every time that that dodger pulses, it's gonna be pulling and moving that lure around. It's gonna put the action on the lure. If I have a long leader with a small spinning glow or a hoochie, it's not gonna have as much action, and that lot of that line in the water is gonna, oh. Ooh, <laughs> I'll get to him in a minute. But having a lot of line in the water is gonna put less action on the lure and it's got, not gonna entice as many strikes. Now, if I'm using a kokanee cut plug, I will sometimes use a 24 inch leader behind this because I'm gonna use the dodger to attract the fish in. But since I'm using the kokanee cut plug, it has so much action on the lure itself that it's shaking and it's wiggling in the corner around and it's gonna entice strikes on its own. All right, and just for reference, I wanted to show you guys what a kokanee cut plug is. If you guys want to see how to fish these, be sure to check out some of our other tutorials that we've got on the Addicted Fishing channel. They're oh, pretty okay. high up, that huh? Smoking, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're moving up. Help it in. That thing is smoking you, dude. <laughs> and here we are trying to film a tutorial for you guys, and the fish keep interrupting. Duh. Hate that. <laughs> Pretty chunky. Thing bit it when I had the rod in my hand. All right, guys. So I'm using downriggers today, and I mean, obviously, the advantage of downriggers is whatever depth that I set that 10-pound downrigger ball at. If I'm trolling 1.0 miles an hour to 1.8 miles an hour, that depth is going to stay the same. So I do prefer using downriggers over using lead. Um, but I wanted to kind of touch back on the lead because not everybody has downriggers. But if I'm gonna add lead to my setup, as you can see here, I've got a considerable distance, probably about at minimum three feet, to where I've got my little swivel where I'm gonna have my lead attachment here. Now obviously, depending on where you're fishing and the depth that you're fishing, you're gonna wanna add you know, either a half ounce or up to three or four ounces of lead. But I'm gonna wanna make sure that I do it up here just so when that dodger is swimming in the water, it is gonna be able to act as freely as it can, even with that lead attached. lead ball there. As you can see that lead ball's on there and it's got a lot of room to where that dodger can dance and it can move that spinning glow in that corn. Well it's starting to rain here now but I figured before we ended this I wanted to touch on one more thing and that's the color of the dodger. Now everybody out there in the kokanee world has their favorite colors and depending on if the sun's shining or if it's cloudy or if they're fishing at depth Everything from straight chrome to gold plated ones, even solid white ones or pink, whatever color it is, you know, I'm not a real big fanatic when it comes to color. I have seen some days where gold is outproduced in chrome, but then the next day the chrome outproduces the gold with the same kind of weather and light situation. So to me, it's more important to have a Dodger that has an effective thump. And I think where you get that is just having the right shape and then the right thickness of the blade having a good thump, having a good swing, calling those fish in from afar, having those fish hear and see your presentation to be able to move in, I think is important. Dodgers that I think are a little wider tend to do that a little better, and ones that like the Brad's Kokanee Dodger that are a little heavier plated tend to do that a little better as well. All right, so there you have it. We're gonna get back to doing some kokanee fishing here, but as always, if we do appreciate your guys' comments. We do appreciate your guys' support, so share this video out with your friends and family, coworkers, neighbors, and all your fish-minded people that you guys know, and we'll see you guys on the water.